So what did you teach these young guys, Mo? You had to do it. Oh, so many things that I would I would teach you different. Physically or mentally? Or? Oh, mentally. Oh, mentally. That's that's ninety percent of this game. It's between the ears. How, how how tough do you think the golf swing is? Not 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 very tough at all. When you when you understand it, if right. I'm the only golfer that's got 365 days a year swing. Because mine is so simple. I hit, I hit my same positions every time. How long do you think it took to make it simple? Five, five hard years. Six, six, seven hundred balls a day. Okay. Oh, yes. So what does it mean for Mo to say that he has a 365 day a year swing? Which is basically a testament to the consistency of the single plane swing. We teach a simpler way to play, and that's what I'm gonna introduce you today, is an easier way as we get into 2020 to build a swing that's a 365 day a year swing. So what does that mean? Now, obviously there's a lot of, a lot of connotations to what it would mean to have a swing that's, that, that you know every day you go out there and you can play well, that's consistent. That means that you wake up every day and, and like Mo, you feel like you're going to play good golf and you don't have to uh, struggle with your golf swing. Now, my goal here for you is to create some clarity in the mechanics of the swing because, look, listen, I'm not a quick fix guy. I'm not the kind of guy that says, hey, just go do this one thing and it all gets better. And let me tell you why. Because a golf swing is really what I call a sum of its parts. In other words, your address position is, is related to your grip and your setup and your spine position. So all every part of the golf swing relates to the next. How you set up an address affects your backswing. Your backswing affects how you can transition. How you transition affects the downswing. So you can kind of see that there's an actual sequence of events occurring here and you gotta build the correct positions in your golf swing to get the sequence of events. So today, let's just get straight into it. And let's talk about how I teach the golf swing. And as we get into 2020, we can, we can, you can go through this and you can use this throughout the year as your roadmap to how you look at your golf swing. You maybe adjust yourself if you need to work on things in your golf swing. But here is your process and roadmap. The very first thing is this. When we teach a golf, and I'm, basically I'm giving you the information that I, if you came to one of my golf schools, this is the process we would work you through. The very first thing you have to master in the process of a, a swing is the foundation of the address position, how you set up to a golf ball. We call it the foundation. I'm going to cover that here today. So this will be your start for 2020, is to cover the address position. So that'll be the content and the instruction I give you today, what I look for in the proper address. Now, but let me just kind of go through the rest of the process that we offer in a golf school. So first thing is the address position. The second thing that I want you to, to, to work on and to look at are the positions that you go into in the swing, which includes not only address position, but into the backswing position, what we call the top and the leverage position, the transition of the swing into impact, release, and then finish. So there's positions. If you can't go into those positions, for example, if you can't go into, so if you can't hit your address, hit this first position, hit the top of the backswing, which we call the second position, transition, go into your hitting position, go into impact, release, and finish. If you can't hit those positions in slow motion or just hit those positions like I just did there, then you're certainly not gonna be able to hit those positions when you're in full speed. So, so the second thing obviously is hitting address, foundation, making sure you can hit the positions or know what they are, know where you're going. Look, if you're, if you're backswing, if you've never hit the correct backswing position, how can you expect to do it in full speed? So the next thing we would teach you, once we teach you how to get through the positions of the swing, is how to, how to create a transition, which is the change of directions from backswing to downswing. That's the third step in this process, how to transition in your swing. And then the fourth step of this process is sequence, sequencing it together. So let's go through that one more time. So this is the process I'm walking you through. Build a foundation. Make sure you can hit the positions of your swing. Make sure you can transition the swing, so change directions. Make sure you can sequence the swing. And there's one final element to this, which is repetition. Doing it over and over again so you can build 
that as your habit, as your main form of the way you swing a golf club. So I just walked you through the process of building a swing. Now, let me walk you through the positions of the swing really quickly because these are the checkpoints of the swing. We call it the A-L-T-I-R-F process, but it just, it just it's a, it's a, it basically denotes all the different positions of the swing. Let me just walk you through them really quickly. Um, so now we're gonna check you, all right? So the very first thing, and by the way, this is how I, this is how I, in a constant monitoring process of students and in a monitoring process of my swing, I have the check process, which is all these positions. These are the things that I do a quick check on every time I practice. The first thing is address, which I'm gonna go into some detail in a minute, but let's just talk about this in, in a general term right now. So address position, making sure that this very first starting position, including how my hands are on the golf club, how my body is tilted, and how my legs are positioned. So there's my first checkpoint address. Is that correct or not? Then I make sure that I can get to this first movement here. And the reason the first movement is important is because it really affects if I have lateral shift or if I over rotate. So this first movement is really a stabilizing movement into that trail leg. So I got to make sure I can get there before I go to the top of the backswing position too and maintain my tilt. So check in your address, checking your first movement to the top, position two, all right? Now, we gotta make sure you can get into that lead knee, so there's that transition, transition to the lead knee. Now I'm gonna stay there, see I'm gonna stay into the knee, I'm gonna rotate my body, I'm not, I'm not going forward, I'm rotating my body in, around that knee, and I keep rotating with my foot on the ground and I get to this impact position. Notice how my trail arm is bent, my lead arm is straight, and then from here, I get extension of the trail arm, there's a, that release, right? And then, and then I'm gonna go to my finish position with my foot on the ground. Then I'm gonna release and stand up. So I would check all those positions and make sure you can go there. You've seen some of the training that I do. Let's say you're struggling with one of the positions. Let's say, by the way, master the address position, which we're gonna get into some detail here today, but master the address because you're sitting, you're standing still at address, and so it's really not a movement thing. So if you're having trouble with movement, at least you can master the foundation of the address. So let's get this address position perfect. Now, let's say you're having trouble with this first movement in your swing, right? So the thing is, you need to train that first movement through repetition. We need to find a way, you know, find out what's causing you to not have a correct first movement. Notice in this process of having address, backswing, transition, downswing, impact, release, finish, there's a model to what I'm teaching you here. I'm basically walking you through the model. Having a model allows you to check those things. So let's go ahead and let's just, for the start of 2020, let me just give you a perfect address position to start with. Let me walk you through my checkpoints. I'll do this both from a face-on angle and a down-the-line angle, and you can use this as your reference right now to start you know, getting into your your training for your single point swing. And you can practice this anywhere, by the way. And some of the stuff I give you here, I'm not pounding golf balls, I'm just working on fundamental movement. All right, so from the face on camera, our goal is to create a absolutely perfect address position. Perfect address. And I want, I want a perfect, which means when I teach address, and you may have seen this on my channel, when I teach address, I teach the entire address position as a sum total. It's not just how you grip it, it's not just how you set up, it's everything together because everything relates to the next. So I teach everything in, in, in one unit in the address. So the first thing that I want you to understand is that we gotta get the lead arm aligned from this angle, but we need the body tilted as well. So what you're gonna see is a tilt to the body of about 20 degrees, all right? So 15 to 20 degrees there, so that's what we call that side bend. And then notice when I'm holding the club here, that if I was to take my hand off the club, it's pointing to my, to my, right above my lead hip there, right? So that's where the club is pointing. That's what we call the pivot point. So that's because of the tilt, because of this alignment, I'm getting my lead arm aligned with the club. Now notice that I've done this before with you, is that when I get tilted, I want you to grab your arm, upper arm here with your trail hand, just like this, and I want you to make a fist and I want you to hold your arm still and just rotate your, your arm like this. Just rotate your forearm as much as you can and that will be the position that you place the arm in that position. So I'm giving you a full range of motion of the lead arm, which is by the way, that'll be the position of impact. This goes into a full range of rotation. So there's your lead arm position. Now, 
I did that first because once you get your lead arm position, I want you to make sure your lead, your lead foot is turned out. So turn that lead foot out just a little bit. Just turn that out. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to bring this trail hand. So you can see where my trail hand is. Make sure you're in your tilt. Your lead, make sure your lead arm's aligned. Bring the trail hand up to the club. And it's going to come from underneath. I want you to overlap and just wrap that thumb into your hand there. See that? So now you are tilted. And now this arm is above this arm. This arm is in the proper rotation. So now you have the ideal alignment of your lead arm. And, and I'll keep my legs pretty straight. Now let's go, let's take this position and let's do, let's do the same thing down the line. So here's my address. See that lead arm aligned with the club. Trail arm is under center and I'm tilted. Trail arm is in a sunny side up position and the lead foot is rotated. Okay, so there's my address from that angle. Let's go down the line. Now one of the issues I always see, and I, I, I see it on my single plane academy, I see it in the coaching program when students send videos in to the, to the program, I see people misinterpret the single plane line. They, they think that it, the arms just get too high and that's a single plane, and that's not it. I remember asking Mo the question, I said, Mo, do you feel like you're reaching for the golf ball? Because everybody thinks that single plane golfers reach for the ball. And Mo didn't say he, he didn't feel like he was reaching for the ball. He said, I feel like a pendulum and I feel like I'm swinging underneath myself. That's the opposite of reaching, right? So he didn't feel that way because it doesn't feel like a reach. I know it looks like you're reaching, but it doesn't feel like a reach. Here's why. So remember, I'm getting the lead arm again in line, so I'm going to do that first. And notice that the tilt, I'm not lifting my arm like this, I'm simply just tilting. So, so I'm not, it, my arm's in actually just a straight, straight out position, and then I'm just tilting my body. And now from there, once again, my legs are pretty straight. See, not bent too much, but pretty straight. I'm going to bring this trail hand from underneath position. And notice what just happened when I did that. I didn't lift my hands because the tilt actually brought me down, and the trail hand comes from underneath. And here's what's important about the alignment here, is that it's lining up with my trail arm. See how the club is lining up with my trail arm? So you don't see it like this. And notice my lead arm is visible above the trail arm, but there's no gap between the arms. That would be too much tilt. So my arm is, once again, I start with my lead arm, bring the trail arm in, and now legs are pretty straight. And there is a perfect single plane address position from my down the line view, and that's going to allow me to start taking the club in a perfect position. There's one final note to this. You, you're going to, and, and you, you know, as you know, I look at the golf swing much differently than maybe a conventional golf instructor. When I look at the shoulder position, because what you're going to say is, well, the shoulders are closed. And if you're looking at the front of the shoulders, that would be an accurate statement. The front of the shoulders are aiming right of my target line. But if I do this, if I want you to notice this, that if I put my arms next to my body, my shoulders are actually slightly open. They're aiming slightly open to the target from my torso's position. So torso and shoulders are different when you look at positioning. I'm more concerned about torso position when I do this because I don't want you closing your body off. I want the torso to be correct because that's what's going to get the arm position correct at address. So there's your single plane line from the down the line view. We'll do it one more time from the face on view. So notice you're getting two lines. You're getting the down the plane line with the trail arm and club, right? So you get that line and then you're getting the alignment face on where the club is lined up with a lead arm. That's because of the tilt of the body. So the tilt of the body is very important in this process. Mastering the address position is the first fundamental of this of our se uh, process here for 2020. And by the way, this is a series of videos. I'm going to do a five part series on the swing. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of these, on th these parts that I'm going to go through the single point swing. Hey, thanks for watching today. That's the first part of this series. I'll see you in the next video of this series.